Hi hey everyone, uh, welcome once again. Good to see you. Uh, TGIF. You know what that is, right? Thank God it's Friday. But uh, if it's, anyways, I hope you all are doing well. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in today um, for the local church course. We'll get started. Uh, can I request one of us to just lead us in prayer, please? Any one of us. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to guide us and to teach us. Uh, help us to open our heart and listen to our pastor as he teaches. Let us not just listen to it, but help us to follow it uh, throughout this life as we journey with you, God. Be with us and give us the boldness and courage. I pray for every one of my classmates who have joined here. Give us all the good network connections that we need. And um, be with them and guide them. And yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Shafina. Uh, all right, guys, uh, before we just dive into uh, the session today, uh, I just wanted to keep us informed that we will be only having one session uh, today because I have a, a funeral service to attend to that I have to be there. At. Okay, so, uh, so we'll just have one class today. All right. Um, anyways, uh, let's get started. Um, so we've covered section one uh, in your PDFs that is uh, that contains six chapters. Um, so we've covered six chapters so far. Um, that is, in section one, it has chapters such as the church, its spiritual and natural dimension, the purpose of the local church, its uh, mission, its message, um, the methods, the government and structure of the local church, stages of growth and development, what makes a strong local church. And in the last class, uh, the church growth principles is what we covered. Right, finally, and uh, um, and and each of those chapters are significant uh, in it, in in itself. Um, and I would encourage you to keep you know revising those chapters uh, anytime whenever you can. Uh, it's going to come in handy. Um, all right. So today we start with section two, um, God's blueprint. Um, that is from chapter seven in uh, page forty-seven in your PDFs. Uh, God's blueprint uh, for the local church, right? Now we've spoken um, very briefly uh, in in the early stages of this course uh, as to the importance of uh, the blueprint, what it does, and uh, but I thought I could just play like a, a one minute video, a quick video of uh, of someone explaining um, what a blueprint is. Okay, so. Like I always like tell I people, a plan is as essential, essential to life as air to breathe. And without a plan, we just wanted to do life with a lack of oxygen. You know, a blueprint pretty much is a plan drawn to scale, direction, and prioritization. This is one of the latest projects we're working on out here in New Orleans East, putting it together, take a look at the blueprints, and uh, yeah. go over a few things. Prints, and uh, yeah. go over a few things. I have a book coming out called Driven by Design, and I try my best okay. to parallel the relationship between the blueprint and okay. the building, right? Okay. For me, I want to know That's what right. is that relationship between the building and the blueprint, and what are some of those distinctive differences right. that people just don't understand or don't see? Because people see the house, right. but they right. don't know about the blueprint and the right. design. Right, absolutely. Well, you have two different levels as it pertains to builders. Uh, you got proficient builders, and then you have efficient builders. Uh, and there's a big difference, and people don't realize that. You know, anybody can be efficient yeah. but in order to be proficient you need a scale you need a plan that's drawn up Whoa. and so that's wait wait the... <laughs> wait y'all look man look right absolutely you know? so absolutely. Th there's, there's right. two ways to this that's thing. right you that's can, right you can do it your that's way right. that's right or you can do it the right way the right way so how often the builder have to right. come back and see the blueprint we look at the plans daily 
No, wait, say it again. Daily, we look at the plans daily, during the start of the day and at the end of the day. Wow. That's how essential plans are to building anything, if you want to do it the proper way. Now I'm about to sound real smart. Come You're on. telling people like, yeah, Go they ahead. got two kind of builders. <laughs> Efficient and appropriate. Yeah, you got it right <laughs> Thank on, Thank you man. so much, y'all, right, man. Take Appreciate care. it. Thank you. All right. All right, um, just a very quick video. Um, uh, I know they were talking a little bit fast as well, but then uh, anything from that uh, you caught, just a few snippets of it, a few pointers that stood out to you? I loved how they said, like, they look into the blueprint daily, not just one day, like, literally they look into it every day. And he said, like, you can either do it on your way or you can do it in the right way. So I love it. Okay, yeah, thanks. Anything else, guys? Anything else? Yeah, it depends between efficient and proficient. Yeah, that was quite uh, an eye opener. Very profound, yeah. 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 So um, they would look at uh, the blueprint at least twice a day, like in the morning and the evening, right? Maybe before they start and after the day's work, they'll come back to it and see, okay, and they refer to the blueprint and uh, uh, draw a comparison or a parallel. Is it is it where it is to be according to the blueprint, um, right? So. Uh, that's just another point for us to uh, establish that the importance of blueprint and how going back to our point in our context that uh, the church is uh, God's idea uh, and he has already given us his blueprint, uh, you know, uh, to build his church because church again is his idea. Uh, how much more should we keep referring to his word, uh, to his blueprint uh, as to the importance um, of of building the local church, right? So that's where we are at. And and in your notes, you'll see it begins by saying the New Testament contains several pictures and images of what God perceives the local church to be. Uh, right? There are a lot of pictures and imagery, uh, right, that God uses in the Bible. Um, so to paint a picture of this is how it should be. And for example, we see that in the tabernacle of Moses, uh, that God gives Moses a blueprint of the tabernacle of that is in heaven already. Right, and you read that in the book of Hebrews, um, right? And so, it's using some of those pictures, those images that God has already given to us, both in the new and in the old. Uh, we keep referring to, okay, and uh, that we will discover uh, what is God's design for the local church, okay? And um, we we'll come down uh, to page forty-eight. We we have this uh, scriptural passage from First Corinthians chapter three, verse ten to fifteen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. Um, it says, According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, who wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work and what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet through, yet so as through fire. Okay, I also want to read the message version um, that's mentioned here. It says, using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Paulus is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Okay, Just take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation. The one already laid, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the foundation is already laid, and that is Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. 
okay uh, now the, obviously this is an imagery or an analogy as an example right um, is the foundation is there the blueprint is given basically a long story short is in simple terms what apostle paul states that we have all been given a common foundation or a blueprint but each of us must be careful how we build and what we build with this is the premise to this whole section and to this whole course basically is that the blueprint has been given the foundation is already being laid now just like what the video the person in the video was saying is you can either do it your way or you can do it the way that the blueprint dictates or is already has uh, you know said um so it's same thing to do with the church um is we can choose to just build the church the way we want to with our own ideas and you know yada 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 uh, or we can choose to follow god's blueprint all right so that is the premise of this whole uh, course this um this section and whatnot okay so having understood that uh, this is once again god's idea he has already given us the f a blueprint and he is the foundation because the foundation is already being laid and that is jesus christ uh, and paul is encouraging us to be careful with what we do and how we do it okay and i think that's very important uh guys all right so we start off the chapter eight um so one of those uh blueprints and uh, we're going to look at this in this section there are about 10 perspectives in this whole thing okay uh very quickly in your pdfs if you can uh, go all the way to page uh, 119 um i think let's go to 119 Right. I'll, I'll give it another second. Hey, if you are, are you there? Page one one nine in your PDF. Cool. So uh, you look at that image, right? It's um, the, it's a table kind of a thing that says God's blueprint for the local church. Um, and we will be going through all of this. Uh, the, from Starting from the bottom, we will be learning about the body of Christ. Uh, as a body of Christ, we represent him and carry out his purposes. The family of God, uh, we live as his family here on earth, uh, the pillar of truth. We uphold truth in this world um, as, as, a, as his local church. We are God's chosen people. We demonstrate kingdom culture and kingdom values. Um, as a local church, uh, we are an army of God. We overthrow the works and the powers of darkness. Uh, as the local church, we are the bride in love with our bridegroom, God. A house of prayer and worship, continuous worship and prayer. The temple of God, God dwelling among us and his glory revealed through us and the vine and the branches which shows off intimacy and births fruitfulness and finally the lampstand our standing before him makes us light in a dark world um, and so this is a very uh, a quick a brief uh, a template so to say of what this section is going to be like and uh, and we will be learning in uh, much detail about all these um, uh, pillars of truth right of god's blueprint for the local church cool um so let's just start off chapter eight the local church the body of christ uh, apostle paul starts off by saying um in colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and he's uh, he said, and he is the head of the body, he referring to Jesus, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Okay? He is the head of the body, the church. And we've already established from the beginning that the church uh, is the body of Christ. Okay, And here Paul is saying that, and Jesus is the head of that body. Uh, right, and in the previous section, we saw that uh, Paul saying that he is the foundation, 
as well. Okay, so a very quick question to us. Uh, when he's saying that he is the head of the body, so um, what is the importance of the uh, of the head to a body? What is the importance of the head to a body? And any medical students, or I actually you don't have to be a medical student to answer this question. Come on, guys, what's the importance of a head? Um, the functions of our body are connected. Okay, functions of a body are connected. Thank you. What else? Head denotes authority. Head denotes authority. Okay. All right. We're going somewhere. Isaac, you were saying something. It controls the activities of the body. It controls the activity of the body. All right. Authority, activity, okay. Any other T's? Come on, guys. Well, nobody else know, understands or knows the importance of a head or what? Zelatoli, Aradhana, Anita. It's not a tricky question, right? Is it? <laughs> if my head is missing, I won't be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> head has brains, so we get direction. Okay. The, the head of the body is the decision maker. <coughs> the decision maker of all of right. the activities and controls them. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yes, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, without the head, the rest of the body is useless. Mm. Well, simple. There we go, guys. <laughs> the head, the rest of the body is useless. That's it. You know, mic drop statement uh, right there. So, um, it. <laughs> Uh, John already knows this, but then you know I, I have this uh, recurring migraines um, that uh, that is really bad, and um, so when I when I have like a severe migraine attack, uh, I literally won't be able to do anything. <laughs> like moving a muscle or a finger or a hand will be like a huge uh, Herculean task, you know, um, and so. So I understand the importance of the head because just with the headache. So, uh, but when we say that Jesus uh, is the head of a body, that means like some of you already said that he is uh, like the authority, um, right? Uh, the decision making thing. Uh, if without the head, we are useless, and so without him, uh, there is nothing we can do. Right? And so the first thing is we acknowledge that he is the head, um, you know, the leadership authority, uh, right? So as his body, uh, it's, the notes say, our life and identity flows from him. Uh, we need to get that straight. Okay, as his people, as his church, we need to acknowledge that he is our head. Uh, and then our identity flows from him. Okay, um, Acts chapter 17, verse 28, uh, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. Isn't that beautiful? And now it all, all of a sudden, all these verses uh, are making sense, you know. Uh, it comes to life. And by the way, I was listening to one of uh, Jordan Peterson's lecture. Um, if, if we know he's not a theologian and all of that, but I just like listening to him talk. Um, and then he, he uses an image, uh, says, talks about how the Bible is the most hyperlinked uh, book uh, ever. Um, so each verse is connected. So 
prob basically long story short there are about 64000 cross references uh, for each uh, scripture uh, it's incredible and you think of a bible is it is a book but then it's a collection of books uh, and and to know that it was written through different times and eras and so many different authors and to know that it has 64,000 odd cross references, it's like clearly a hyperlink book. And so, I mean, when we read Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, uh, and then we read, you know, verses like Acts chapter 17, verse 28, it's so beautiful just to see uh, how it all comes together and makes sense, you know. Um, yeah, that's just a side note there. So, um, the foundation and the basis of this is. Our identity, when we know that our identity flows from Him, uh, and not uh, in our denominations or doctrines, uh, it's um, you know when we realize that who we are in Christ, uh, you know, our identity is not in our denominations, some doctrine or some peculiar way of doing things or some other earthly things. We are His body, and hence we carry His name alone. Okay, and so that's the basis of everything, and and now and as his body, we represent uh, Jesus. We reveal Jesus. Okay, so we are his body. He is our head. Our identity flows from him. Having understood that, now. It is our job. It is our duty to represent or re present um, Jesus to the world or reveal or unveil that's the, another word for revealing right a revelation or an unveiling that happens we need to unveil Jesus to the world uh, right so as his body we represent Jesus we reveal Jesus as it says in Ephesians 1 22 23 and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church and gave him to be head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all right and in the book of 1 john uh, we see that uh, at least uh, we we are called to represent uh, uh, jesus at least seven times it says uh, in john, 1 john 1 7 walk in the light as he is light uh, walk as he walked see him as he is purify ourselves as he is pure uh, right and the list goes on um, practice righteousness as he is righteous love as he loved and commanded us to love as he is so are we in this world so time and time again uh, you know John is encouraging us to uh, represent Jesus uh, and then he's constantly drawing a parallel and the standard is Jesus okay uh, be a light as uh, you know so and so person is a light uh, he's not he's not comparing to another disciple or an apostle or a deacon or an elder he's saying be a light and our standard is Jesus okay uh, be pure as Jesus is pure um, so it's right up there okay and so and I, th I think so many times it's very easy for us uh, to draw a comparison or or, or uh, I, to focus on another man i mean i don't know how, how to say that but then it's okay to have role models and whatnot but i think you understand what i'm saying right it's okay it's absolutely uh, necessary to honor another man of god uh, but our standard our head uh, our king our leadership our authority uh, is always Jesus right and so we represent as his body we represent Jesus we reveal uh, Jesus okay Christ is our a standard our model our pattern our ability to represent him comes from the fact that he fills each of us with himself right um, so is uh, are you all uh, still alive <laughs> okay I take that as a yes. Um, and then, so that's the first point, isn't it? So, as his body, we represent and we reveal Jesus. The next, as his body, we are his hands and feet. 
we do his will okay we are his hands and feet we do his will and so the church is the instrument to execute christ's purposes okay can i say that again it's in the notes page 50 the church is the instrument to execute christ's purposes okay uh in in the beginning of this course we mentioned uh, we spoke a little bit about the message uh right of the local church right the message the purpose uh and whatnot um so the great commission is we saw that it's not a great suggestion and so what helps in fulfilling the great commission is the local church and the local church uh, helps in fulfilling the great commission so uh, it goes in in that circle isn't it and so that's why we're talking about the local church is the instrument to execute christ's purposes right and and the purpose that he gave us was that the great commission right so the body executes what the head commands we are to listen to him and then move execute what he speaks right isaac says uh isaac just said that you know it tells us what to do uh you know which hand to use, which which leg to do, and whatnot. Uh, like Rosalind says, it head has the brains, so it's it's telling us what to do, isn't it? Uh, which direction to go? Um, wait, uh, one of the not 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 a not a great sight to see is what we call it as a, a person with a brain damage or a brain dead person, uh, right? Uh, I mean, they are just like a, what the scientific field calls it as a vegetable, uh, you know, they're just breathing. That's it. Uh, they're not able to move a muscle. They're nothing else, isn't it? Um, but so it's very important to uh, just the head is again establishing that point that the importance of uh, the head. We are to listen to him and then move, execute what he speaks. Uh, because in Matthew ten forty. Uh, Jesus, when he says that, he sees himself extended through us, uh, right? Because in the previous point, we said we are to represent or represent, right? We are Christ's ambassadors here on earth, isn't it? Uh, when we say we come in the name of Jesus, uh, you know, Jesus feels extended through us. So that's why he says, he who receives you receives me. Why? Because we come in his name, we come bearing his name, we are there representing him. And he who receives me, uh, receives him who sent me. Okay, um, in such a profound statement. And John 20, 21 also says, so Jesus said to them again, peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I send you. Okay, so as his body, we are his hands and his feet. Uh, we are to do, um, we do his will. Okay. Um, and then the third point is, as his body, we are in relationship with one another. Okay. we As his body, we are in relationship with one another. So what's the first point again? As his body, we represent and we reveal Jesus. Second thing, as his body, we are his hands and feet. And with that, we do his will. Okay. And then the third point, as his body, we are in relationship with one another. Uh, here's a classic uh, in a scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul is explaining the importance um, of the different body parts and how they are connected. Right. Um, can someone, can I request someone to uh, read that passage, please? Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12 to 27. It's in the notes, um, so can I request one of us to read that? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27. As the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many or one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit for in fact the body is not one member but many if the foot should say because i'm not hand i'm not of the body is it therefore not of the body and if the ear should say because i'm not an eye i'm not 
I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there were many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker or necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow great honor. And our, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no sin in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is haunted, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Amen. Yeah, thanks, Jafina. Okay, uh, it's an incredible passage of scripture. So much of wisdom there, right? Um, and so uh, the notes below are... We've just uh, kind of dissected that uh, entire passage of scripture. So let's just go through that quickly, okay? Um, so the body has many members, okay? Uh, we are different in terms of role and function in the body. We are not all same, okay? Uh, I think everybody can agree to that. Uh, but each one of us is a member of the body. None of us is not needed right none of us uh, can say that we are not needed or not one person can say about another person that this person is not necessary or is, or is not needed uh in the body of christ we can't say that right each one of us is a member of this body of christ uh, we are not independent we need each other okay and there are diverse functions in the body um you know it's drawing a parallel so let's just we we're talking about the church we can talk about the different teams uh, that goes uh, in to make one church uh, service happen from the vo uh, different volunteering teams like from the worship team the setup team the sound uh, team the streaming uh, live streaming team uh, the teams that serves the communion uh, the team that uh, cleans that there's a team that what else collects the offering uh, there's a team for welcoming the new people. There's a team, uh, ushering team, uh, who greets and distributes books and whatnot. Uh, and the children's church team, the teens' church team, the youth team. Uh, what is guys? Uh, am I? I'm. I'm sure I'm missing out a lot. The parking team um, helps in parking. You know the vehicles. Uh, what else? Can can anyone say it's like okay, hey, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, you know, we don't need you. You're not necessary. We can't, isn't it? Uh, there are diverse functions in the body, and that's why uh, we are dependent on each other. We need each other, right? Um, and also goes on to say, uh, God has placed each one where He saw it best for us, and He was pleased as He was pleased. Uh, it takes many of us, all of us, to make up the whole and we can never claim independence uh, recognize that others have been placed around you to give into your life okay um, highlight that line if you can recognize we need to recognize that others have been placed around you to give into your life and you have been placed around them to give into their lives Right? I need others and others need me. It's not an arrogant statement. It's it's a statement of humility. Okay. Uh, I need others and others need me. Right. Um, so others need your counsel or your wisdom, your strengths and, and whatnot. Right. So again, coming back to our live example in church, like we have those uh, who, who serve in the sound team because they have experience in how to use a mixer board uh, a sound board or setting up the speakers you know okay how to increase the volume decrease the volume this is how it should sound right i i know how to control the treble the mids and the bass etc 
uh and uh and there there might be others who say is like okay that is not my forte i'm not trained in that area i don't have any interest in that but i like to greet people i'm a very i'm an extrovert person i want to greet them i want to shake their hands i want to give them a hug spiritual hug and all of that <laughs> like yeah um right so we we need each other isn't it uh and that's the beauty of, of the body of christ uh we are uh we all need each other and the next point is even more beautiful it says god gives great honor to what seems to have less honor okay what seems weaker is necessary and hence it's particularly important what seems hidden receives great honor and hence must not be treated lightly what seems hidden receives great honor uh, i mean this just reminds for uh, me of uh, my church's uh, when i say my church our church apc uh, is is the setup team uh, i have huge respect that they are my favorite team uh, although there are like 19 different teams that work together to make one service happen setup team is my by far my favorite uh, and i'm going on record over here <laughs> and they know that uh, they are that's the team that comes first uh, the day before, move equipments, set up the equipments. It's back-breaking work. Roll the cables, uh, set up the cables. Um, and so the worship team can come and lead worship. And the team, worship team and uh, the worship leader, the musicians are all under the spotlight, under the lights and the stage. Everybody who comes into the church service at 10.30 a.m. sees the, the worship leader with the guitar and whatnot, nobody sees the person, the people who came at 6 a.m. in the morning to just to set up everything, roll out the carpets, bring out the trunk with all this heavy equipment, lay it all so that the team can come. Uh, and um, we can't say, ah, they're just the setup team, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we, we can't. If the, if the setup team is not there one Sunday, and that happened once, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not fun, uh, you know, just doing your own setup and uh, and and also being part of the team is back breaking work. So uh, and and we need to recognize the team that is not seen. Right. Or oh, that seems hidden. Uh, right. Oh, I'm just using one example of one team. There could be so many other teams who are working behind the scenes and most of them are working behind the scenes. Right? I didn't even mention about the live streaming team who's all at the back of the green room and and they're like, okay, if something happens to the internet connection, what can we do? Uh, is there anything, you know, all this just is so important, right? We are all important. It, nobody can say one team is more important than the other team. You guys with me, right? Um, and then finally, God does not want any division or strife in his body, but that we demonstrate much love and care for one another. That point kind of sums up the whole chapter, right? So uh, as his body, we are in relationship with one another, right? And so uh, moving on from that point, some of the practical ways a local church can implement this some of the practical ways uh, how we can implement this as his body our life and identity flows from him how can we apply this uh, in our practical in our local church is uh, teach teach believers right uh, teaching brings about a revelation isn't it? it 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 reveals knowledge okay what i didn't know now i know when you learn something or when you're being taught, it's like, oh, I didn't know about this, right? And the importance of being taught uh, is so important. I right? teach believers to always see their identity in Jesus, not in their denominations or in their local church or in their gifts or in their talents, whatnot. Identity is so much more deeper, right? Uh, our identity is in Him. We need to teach that. Ensure that everything we do Everything we do as a local church flows out of a place of relationship and intimacy with him. Uh, these are all such basic, basic points, isn't it? And yet this is where we, uh, we fail brilliantly. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, <clears throat> in the most grand scale, we fail when we don't get these two things uh, right our identity when we think uh when we you know 
when we depend, uh, when we think that our identity is in our gifts, our talents, our strengths, and whatnot, and not on Jesus, not in Jesus. And uh, when we do everything uh, out of the relationship and intimacy of Jesus, everything begins to fall apart. Right? So as his body, we need to teach our believers. We, you need to teach your congregation. You need to teach your people, your teams. You need to emphasize this, uh, you know, or uh, impress all of this in them. Right? As his body, once again, we represent Jesus. We reveal Jesus as his body. We are his hands and feet. Uh, right? uh, we do his will. Uh, but time and time again, we see that, uh, you know, Jesus, at least in the Gospel of John, you know, he says, uh, John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, uh, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. That's John four thirty four. John five chapter. Uh, John chapter five verse thirty says, "I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of Him who sent me." And John chapter six verse thirty eight. Uh, it says, "For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of Him who sent me." Right, um, and I, I love this prayer in Psalm 143, uh, verse 10. It says, "Teach me to do Your will, for You are my God. Let Your good Spirit lead me on level ground." I love that uh, prayer, right? Uh, and so, if I mean, I, the humility of Jesus is seen even when He keeps saying that, you know, I am here uh, because. The Father sent me, and I'm here to do not my will, but His will. Right? If anyone on earth had all the license to go rogue, it was Jesus. Right? It's like my way. I am the one way. You know, two thousand years from now, Hillsong is going to sing about me. <laughs> uh, but then He humbled Himself. Right? That not my will, but Yours be done. Right? How much more should we? Right? Um, as his body, where we are in relationship with uh, one another, encourage all believers to find their role and function in the local church body. Uh, I mean, sometimes not everybody might know what their strength is, you know, which team they can serve in. Uh, if they are confused, you just tell them to just start serving in, in a team, uh, whichever, you know. I mean, if they really want to serve in the worship team, please have an audition. <laughs> uh, that's a safe bet. Um, but everything else, actually, like hiring to someone else, you don't need an audition for all that. They can just start serving, isn't it? Um, okay. Um, and so, in conclusion, uh, with having said all of this, a couple of uh, a challenges uh, that we need to be aware of. Okay. Um, challenge of culture and uh, social backgrounds. The challenges that you can be prepared for, and it's not the only challenges. There are lots more. Uh, there are so many challenges that you will not learn about in the Bible College. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure all the previous, all the pastors and all the previous Bible College students or graduates were not uh, prepared for COVID. So I'm just putting it out there. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> So some local churches may have people who come from varied cultural and social backgrounds, okay? Cultural and social backgrounds. Sometimes people find it difficult to cut across these differences and come together as one body, okay? Uh, and what's the one challenge there? It's the social backgrounds, the cultural backgrounds. Uh, it takes time for this to happen. So. Um, and the notes goes on to say, as a senior pastor or leader, be sensitive to where things are. Uh, people tend to stay within groups uh, they are comfortable with, uh, which is fine. But it is our duty, our responsibility um, to constantly encourage people to step out of their uh, own groups and interact with others. Encourage a kingdom culture. Okay. Um, do not purport promote any one culture or social or language group over another. It's like, yeah. But you get the point, right? Do not pro promote any one culture or social or language group over another. 
uh, again, keep emphasizing, teaching them that, hey, we are all one. Uh, we need to function as one, uh, right? Just a couple of uh, challenges that you can be prepared for. And I'm sure you can already relate to some of it. Um, but then another challenge is misapplication of being um, one body is, um, I mean, some of them find it really hard to, uh, and, I mean, they, they go to two different extremes. One extreme is in, in the spectrum. One extreme is this. Yeah, I'm part of the body of Christ. Uh, and so I, why should I belong to just one local church? I will go to every local church uh, in the city of Bangalore or your city because yeah, I'm part of the local church. That's an, uh, one full extreme. Uh, and commitment is, uh, I, yeah. Right? So that's what it says here. Sometimes people misapply this truth of being one body. They have no commitment to a single local church, but just float around different local church in town according to their own fancy. Uh, some may even float around across local churches for other reasons, such as to network and gain contacts to promote their own ministry and so on. So that's one extreme. Then there's another extreme saying, um, hey, uh, you know, I am committed to this local church, so I will not even talk to a person who is from another local church. Uh, it's like, hey, if you're not from APC, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> That's another extreme. Uh, so we need the, the, in the spectrum, there is a balance, right? I mean, we recognize that we are part of this universal church, right? We are the body of Christ, and yet we are called to be committed to a local church. And that should not stop us from having fellowship or any kind of relationship from people from another churches, other local churches. Um, right, and all of this again, uh, what will help is how you teach uh, your congregation. Okay, um, so that's uh, this chapter is the first perspective is that we are the body of Christ. Okay, uh, any questions or any thoughts so far? Imagine uh, we have members. Uh, okay, so there's a question from John Paul. He says, imagine we have members who visits another church, informing the pastor. Okay, so in, who visits another church, informing the pastor at least once in two months. Is it okay to have them as volunteers? Uh, two months means that's a half a month. So four Sundays in a month. <laughs> So two Sundays here, two Sundays there. Uh, <laughs> At yeah. least once in two months, like once in eight weeks. So they, they go to another church once in eight weeks. So they like form for going. Sometimes they don't need form also, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, What do you do? Uh, you, I mean, you talk to them about the commitment and whatnot, because um, and because uh, like at, even at APC, uh, we have people who just have a membership uh, in another church, uh, another denomination church, uh, but they are very very active at, uh, in our worship teams and and whatnot. Uh, because I mean, they've the member. They, I, I don't know how this is possible, but they seem to have membership in both the churches. Uh, but that's a different story. But uh, here, I mean, you you might should have a conversation with them and see uh, where they want to be committed. Now, it might begin with one week. It might some months. It might be two weeks. Uh, some months, like I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. You know, just keep. Yeah, increasing. So just or, to, uh, it's not good for both the churches, no. So, so go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was saying it, it's just to, uh, as you said, it's a similar kind of what we mentioned. Like you know, they have a membership in another church, but they like uh, all people's church or uh, the church that we have. And uh, just to <laughs> reiterate, the other church that my membership is still there. Uh, they go so uh, you know maybe for funeral or maybe for any wedding. Uh, yeah, 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 but they they are uh, very much involved. They were very much uh, committed to yeah. when they come, but they are very much into yeah. church. So in those cases, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, see, uh, 
<clears throat> it's a very unique uh, situation to your church. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, there might be situations like this, but then having a conversation with them about commitment. And so it doesn't affect uh, their commitment to your church or neither to the other church, uh, right? If they're somewhere in the fence, um, uh, you know, and that's what I have told to certain people uh, who sit on the fence who and who come to APC because um, they want to come. I mean, they can't come to certain youth meetings or because they are involved there and they can't be there because they are involved here. It's none of us being benefited. So um, and they can't go on like that for a long time. So have a conversation with them. Yeah. Also, just uh, one more similar question. Like, what if a person um, is involved in another ministry so mm -hmm. that ministry helps other churches so as a part of being involved in that ministry he or she wants to go to other churches on sundays but not every sunday but at least as i said like once in two months or so um so uh, in those cases what should be our approach like you know if uh, you know is this because they are part of another ministry so they are into distribution of bibles or evangelism stuff like that so uh, as a part of that they want uh, they want to visit other churches to promote that ministry or uh, to it, it's not exactly promoting ministry but you know in in a sense that you know they want to evangelize sure. more and let people know things like that yeah so, uh, completely taking in the right sense so what would should yeah. be our uh, approach you know i think that's uh, that's fine um uh, John, I mean, there isn't. I also say that is because, as you mentioned, that if they're leading a ministry or they're if they are part of a ministry, uh, you know, and the ministry in itself is not church, but then they see the need to be plugged into a local church, which is your church, for example. Uh, but then the ministry and the, the duty calls that they have to, you know, reach out to another churches or be elsewhere. Uh, but I think it, it, it's fine as long as you see their commitment um, to your church. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank uh, you. Hello? Okay. Yeah, you know, okay. we were, I was going to come. Yeah, <laughs> good. Yes, good morning. I want to put my out on the, what is the discussion that is going on. We have a local church and we have a ministry. There are people who run the ministry and there are people who run the local church. It depends on God's direction. Uh, I, I want to use my own case as a case study. We, start, we will have the mind to start as a church, but the maker said, no, you start a ministry. And uh, our ministry, we do it once every, I mean, once in a week. And uh, we have a local church where we attend and yeah. we work as a member in that local church. Though the pastor recognizes us, but yeah. that is not our own ministry. All right. We do everything to make sure we keep learning from the local church while we yeah. do our ministry. Yeah. And sometimes I got invitation to minister both outside my state. Once they didn't see me in the local church, they know that we are going to a ministry work. Mm. So there is nothing uh, wrong in that, yeah. in as much that you are serving the Lord. And yes, there's another uh, ministry, they meet every Sunday, it's Colonia, every yeah. Sunday. And uh, yeah. all the workers, the workforce of that ministry, they belong to a local church. But that right. Sunday evening, 5 o'clock mm -hmm. to 9 p.m., 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., is right. feed up more than a thousand more than ten thousand year about they right. belong to local church but right. they go to another ministry i think it, it, it's okay and uh, yeah. just know your stand thank you yeah yeah thanks you know yeah yeah i think it's also uh i mean we encourage um you know even at, at apc uh, we encourage people to you know go out and serve in different ministries and whatnot like uh like i would uh I, even John, I think, you know, we were part of, uh, not part, we would serve in this ministry called Face to Face Foundations, where we would go lead worship uh, in their uh, house of prayer and uh, whatnot, right? So uh, now, where we draw the line or where we, this, the guidelines that we would give uh, the, our worship team members at APC is that we encourage them to go and serve, minister outside and whatnot. Uh, but then 
the other end of the spectrum is this so they will only come to church on the sunday they would lead worship and on the rest of the sundays they are not to be seen uh, in church uh, you know because they are cons they are ministering you know in the city and whatnot uh, now that we don't encourage as much okay so we encourage our worship team members to also be part of the services when they are not playing it's not like okay you have to come to church only when you're part of the team on sundays uh, you know we we encourage our worship team members to uh, you know to be there uh, if there's not sunday with they can't be that's understandable but if if it's a regular practice or a recurring practice where they are only they only come to sunday uh, uh, to church on a Sunday that they're leading and the rest of the month if they're not to be seen then that's uh, That's not very healthy and we don't encourage that um, as well But there has to be a balance isn't it? Um, it, it uh, every uh, you know great um, You know people like Christom and Paul Belosh uh, And whatnot so they might travel the world, uh, you know leading worship and whatnot but uh, in all their personal websites and blogs and whatnot, uh, they teach on the emphasis on being connected to a local church. When they are in their city, uh, you know, they they, import, they feel the need to be part of a local church, connected, plugged in, to be accountable to a leader, whatnot, right? So that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, John, um, you know, for uh, questions and insights. Okay, um, so we'll stop the class now, and as I mentioned, we will have only one session for, uh, for today, all right? And I'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining in, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.